As Rails developers, we frequently use the command line, but there's a lot that we can do to get the most out of it. And one of the first things I recommend doing is switching over to Z shell. Now the default shell in a lot of systems is bash. You can see that that's what I have as default here. But how do we switch to Z shell? Well, it's a little bit difficult to configure from scratch. That's why I recommend using this project called oh My ZSH. Now oh My ZSH is by Robbie Russell and it comes with a nice default configuration and also a lot of plugins and themes you can choose from. Now the installation is really simple, just copy and paste this command into your terminal. And there's also a manual installation option if that's your preference. Now if you're on Windows, I'm guessing there's some kind of a Z shell emulator out there you can use, but I haven't looked into it at all. Now when you run the installation command, you might get this error saying you don't have wget installed. If that's the case, you could just use curl instead. Here's a command for doing that same thing through curl, and I'll just post this in the show notes. So once it downloads that file, it's going to uh, clone the ZSH repo here. And then to change to Z shell, we just need to type in our password and voila, now it's installed. And then when you open up a new terminal window, you'll start using Z shell. The first thing you'll notice is that the prompt looks considerably different and you can customize this fully through themes, which I'll get to a little bit later. But for the most part, you can run the same commands in here like you did before, and it will just work like normal. Now, one of my favorite features of Z shell is the smart auto completion. For example, here, if I type in LS dash, I can hit tab here and get a nice list of options that I can pass into the LS command, and they're all nicely documented here. This is especially useful for more complex commands such as git commit and pass in a dash and tab, and I get a nice list of git commit options here. Really useful. Another feature I like is the more extensive wildcard options. For example here, let's say I want to list out all the Ruby files inside of my Railscast project. Well, you can use the double asterisk to do deeply nested directory searching. For example, I can find all the Ruby files here and it will just list those out no matter which directory they are in under the Railscast project. Now there are a lot of great features that OhMyZSH adds as well. Some of them are specific to the OS X terminal. For example, it displays more detailed information in the window title bar here. And also another feature I really like is that if you're inside of a directory and you make a new tab in the terminal, it's going to maintain that same directory. That saves a lot of time. And there are a lot of little things as well. Like if you start typing in a command and you press the up arrow, it's going to filter the history based off of what you typed already. Otherwise, it's just going to find all of the history commands. Now all of this can be configured, so let's move on to some configuration and see how that's done. There's a file in your home directory called uh, .zshrc, and this is the file that gets loaded when you start up a new session. So it's a good place to start configuring. So here's what that file looks like. Uh, first it sets the path to omyzsh, oh and then the theme, which I'll get into that in a little bit, and then various other options. Uh, for example, I personally don't like colors in my ls command, so you can disable that with that. Um, you can set plugins here, which I'll get into that as well. Then this line here just loads oh my ZSH, and then you can specify your path and other options here. Now this path defaults to whatever it was set at when uh, you installed oh my ZSH, but I think it's better instead to carry this over from your bash profile. Now you can see in my home directory here, I have a file called dot bash profile, which contains some settings when loading up the bash shell. And right now it's just a couple of lines for loading the uh, Ruby env but these should be moved over to the zshrc file. So we can do that by just appending it to the zshrc file there. That way it's added to the end of that. Now these settings will be different for you depending on what you have set up in your system. Usually you can just copy them straight across, but sometimes you might need to adjust it slightly uh, to match zsh. Next, let's configure the theme. And this is where we change the way the prompt looks here. So to see what themes are available to us, you can open up the omyzsh oh directory here. And in there, there's a directory called themes. And there are a lot of themes available right out of the box here. There is a wiki page available, which lists many of the different themes and uh, includes pictures. So you can quickly get an idea of which ones you like. Now, if you want to fully customize it, you can also create your own theme. So I can make a new file here under the themes directory called uh, rbates.zsh theme. I'll just paste in some code here for the uh, settings I like. It's a very minimal theme. Um, generally in a theme, you're setting the prompt value and you can also set other values such as the get prefix and suffix. And you could check out the source code for the various other themes to get an idea of what values you can set and how they work. 
You can also check out this page here for documentation on the various characters you can pass into that prompt value and what exactly they do. I'll link to this page in the show notes. Once you're done, you can change a theme inside of the ZSHRC file. Just change this value here to the file name of the theme. So here's what my theme looks like. It's very minimal. It basically just shows you the current path and also the uh, Git branch if that's available. And now time for the plugins. Uh, these are really fun, but before you go adding them, it's a good idea to first check them out in the plugins directory here to see exactly what they do. Now, one of my favorite plugins is the bundler plugin here. Whenever you see a file that starts with an underscore like this one here, it's going to add some auto completion functionality to that command. So that's always nice. And the plugin also does a few other things here. You can see this sets up a few aliases here, and it also does something really cool by automatically using bundle exec for all these commands here. So this means if you're tired of typing bundle exec all the time, just add this plugin and you no longer will need to for these commands. There are many other great plugins here that are worth using. The uh, brew plugin adds some auto completion behavior and so does the gem plugin. And the uh, some plugins aren't quite as useful though. The uh, Rails 3 plugin, for example, just adds some aliases. I don't really find that all that useful. I mainly just use the Rails command for that. And the Ruby command is similar. It just adds a couple aliases that I don't find all that useful. I don't run those commands very often. But there are a lot of plugins here, so be sure to browse through them and see what you like. To add the plugins, just go to your ZSHRC file and add them to the plugin setting here, and just type in the names of the plugins, separating them by a space. Now you may also want to create your own plugins for some extensive customization. For example, I like to keep all my projects inside of this directory called code, and to have to type this all every time to get into that directory, it's kind of a pain. So I like to just set up a C command, which will allow me to just access the projects directly with one call like this. Now, oh my ZSH comes with this custom directory here, which is automatically going to load any file that ends in .zsh in the root of this, but you can also make your own custom plugins in here by making a plugins directory inside of here. And then you just make a new directory for each plugin that you want to make, such as, uh, let's make one called rbates. And then we need to make a file in here called uh, rbates.plugin.zsh. So in here, I can make a quick function called c, and what that does is it will go into the code directory followed by any path that they supply. It needs to end in a semicolon because it's uh, all in one line. Now it would be nice if there was some auto-completion for this function as well. And to do that, it's a bit more complex, so I'll just paste in the code necessary for this. Basically, if you're ever wanting to add auto-completion for a command, you should just make another one prefix with an underscore. And here I'm just delegating to the underscore files uh, completion behavior and basically saying just complete based off, based off of the files in the uh, code directory there. And I'm defining the completion here, saying that the underscore C should be the completion for the C command. Now once you're done with the plugin, don't forget to add it to your ZSHRC file because it's not going to be added automatically. Now for those changes to take effect, you'll need to open up a new terminal window, but now I can just type in the C command and followed by the path of any project inside of my code directory and it will automatically do auto-completion for it. So I can just go there like that. And that wraps up this episode on Oh My ZSH. It's a really great project. I encourage everyone to try it out. In the pro episode this week, I go into further depth on ZShell and talk about scripting. There are times when a shell script is more succinct than a Ruby script, and I tell you a story here about one of those times. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com slash pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.